G'day guys, in this video I'm breaking down a couple of different hunts that I did hunting seeker, bush hunting seeker with print, uh, print indicating all of these deer. Um, I've been a bit slack lately with filming my hunts properly, I've been filming all of the hunting parts but I haven't been introing the hunting videos while I'm out in the bush and constantly breaking down the hunt and talking to the camera the whole time, I've just been hunting basically with the GoPro on my head and the camera on the rifle but I haven't really been talking to the camera and explaining the hunts as we've been going. I've just sort of been uh, taking a step back a little bit from filming for a couple of hunts and just sort of enjoying hunting anyway but I have always had the GoPro running pretty much either on my head and that, that gun cam that I've got. And in this video I'm going to break down three different deer that I shot with print. Uh, one was, he tracked it, tracked the seeker hind for about 20 minutes and probably about five or 600 meters. So that's a real good example of the dog tracking. And I'm going to go to the whiteboard and I'm gonna draw a, a couple of examples of the direction that the wind was going and the line that we tracked the deer with and all of that and break it all down and show you exactly how all of that worked because that first deer print did a really good job tracking it, but the wind wasn't quite right. It was on an angle. Actually, the wind was right behind us when we first started tracking. So we were tracking basically with the wind right up our ass. And I want to explain how all that worked and how we tracked with the wind right up our ass. And then the deer did a 90 degree turn and then another 90 degree turn. And next thing we're tracking this deer straight in with the wind in our face. But it was angling a little bit so print didn't get the direct wind from the deer but i saw the deer and shot it so that's a good tracking job from print uh leading right up to shooting that deer and actually uh the bullet deflected off some sticks that were between me and the deer so the deer actually covered quite a bit of distance before it died so print then tracked it for quite a long way um, after the shot as well. So I want to explain that and break all that down. Again, I'm going to show you on the whiteboard. Um, the next deer we shot was a great example of a direct wind. So just cruising down a gully. I'd actually just spooked the deer off this face. It, it had squealed at me. I'm pretty sure I've got that on footage. I'll dig that up, the deer squealing and taking off. Uh, and then not far past that, Print just winded hard straight up the side. He was cruising along in front and then he just did that hard turn, winding really hard. And I knew it was close and it was about 150 meters from where Print started winding. And we went up this face, when we hit the top of the ridge, was, the wind was coming in on one angle and then like spilling over and, and then coming straight down the face. So that was interesting too because the dogs were winding straight up the face and then when we got up there, they did like almost a 90 degree turn and the deer was to our right. The dogs are winding straight up. I'm expecting the deer to be straight over. But as soon as we hit the top, the dogs just are looking down there to our right. And that's where the wind's coming from. So another little interesting thing there. And I shot that deer. Uh, and the third deer in this video, another tracking job, but very, very fresh tracking. Print tracked not far about 100 meters um, we were just walking along hunting and print put his nose down started tracking real keen real keen and i was like okay this deer's probably right here uh followed print for about barely even 100 meters followed him for about four three or four minutes and sure enough squeal out to my right a couple of deer go charging off and um, I pulled them up with the old fawn call. And I managed to sneak up on them while they were standing into people and squealing. I approached them, giving the fawn call a couple of times. I managed to get right in on these spooked deer um, and shot the yearling out of a yearling and a hind. So that's, enough, that's sort of a track to a spook and shoot and sneaking in and getting a shot at a at a squealing deer, you know, which with a seeker, that's sort of the equivalent of spooking a red and it's barking at you and then you still sneak in and shoot it anyway after it's been spooked and while it's barking at you. 
So anyway, let's go to the whiteboard and we'll break down how we shot this first deer. Okay, so before I explain exactly how print indicated this first deer, I want to explain a quick idea with you, and it's called taking a bite of the wind. So here, these blue lines and arrows represent the wind going this way. Taking a bite of the wind is just something that I've labelled myself, and I, I call it that in my head, when I get into this situation in the bush, and I assess what's going on, and I think, man, I've got to take a bite of the wind. What that means to me is when the wind's going this way, but I'm entering the bush over here, and this is private land out that way, or it's a river and bluffs down here, and it's something else over here, and I'm starting here, and I want to hunt this area, but the wind's going that way, I've got to take a bite of the wind. And all taking a bite of the wind is, to explain it just really quickly and sim simply, there's more to it than this, but taking a bite of the wind is just starting here, and I can't just hunt straight out, otherwise I'm going to be hunting with the wind right behind me. So I'll basically start my hunt, I'll generally try to quarter the wind on an angle, out like that, and then as I'm hunting out, if I come past an, a deer, the dog can actually smell it on the wind and turn back into the wind and take me back to it. Because the wind's coming this way, so even though I'm sort of starting with the wind behind me, I'm, I'm cutting across the wind like that and the dog can win deer back behind me and we can cut back and shoot them and that happens all the time. But the other thing here is I'll just hunt out like this and I'll get out as far as I can or as far as I've got as long as I've got time for and I'll cut right out and around and get right out behind and back out into a into a good area because arguably this area here that I'm quartering across that wind is taking my scent through some of that too and I'll try to get right out and around into a, into a clean area and then I can spend the rest of the day hunting back into the wind that's taking a bite of the wind okay so this is a diagram of how we shot this first deer this is my hunting area this L shape here is a ridge this is all a ridge here. This is a gully in the middle, and there's another ridge on the other side. This squiggly line is the river, and there's also bluffs all along here. So there's basically, it is, it's a big gorge along here. The river's along here with all bluffs. There's a steep creek along here with a lot of bluffs as well. And that red line there is the very edge, the corner of private land. That's forestry out that way, so we can't actually go that way. Down here is a spur, and that's where we enter the hunting area. My camp's back along that way. And the blue lines are the wind, and the wind's coming this way. So here I'm really in that situation where I'm entering here, and right where I'm entering, the wind's going that way, away this is my hunting area out here. I've got bluffs in a natural boundary here, bluffs in a natural boundary there, private land up there. I'm entering here. I want to hunt out this way, but that's the, that's the way the wind is going. So what I first did this day is this ridge here is a really nice open ridge. I come up this spur here between the bluffs and I actually hunted out along this ridge hoping to shoot a deer out along there, hunting into that nice side wind there. And Prince started tracking out this way too, and he actually tracked up out along this ridge, right out towards the boundary, and right here, he was actually winding really hard right there. Really keen winding a deer that was out right by the boundary. So, I don't mess with boundaries, so I turned around and come back. Again, remember all of this is public hunting country out here, public hunting land. And there's a lot of really good hunting like way off the side of the end, end of the whiteboard going up that way and going out this way. So that was my first area to hunt this ridge. That's probably only about 300 odd yards out that way. This, this, this map definitely isn't to scale by the way. And 
This whole area from the top of this ridge up to the head of this gully is probably about 600 yards, 600 meters wide. So it's not a huge, huge area, but it goes for miles past that. So after I hunted out along this ridge, print indicated a deer out there, but I couldn't go that way because it's private land. So I come back and I come back this way. And as I'm coming, walking back along here, it's only a couple of hundred meters. I'm thinking, okay, I've got to take a bite of the wind today. So I was making a plan to hunt way out this way, take a bite of the wind and then turn around and hunt back into the wind for the afternoon and then basically hunt back through this nice area here in the evening and that was going to be my hunt. Print started tracking a deer right here. He started about right there somewhere and that deer come down into this gully with Print tracking it. Print was tracking pretty keen. I knew we weren't that far behind this deer and within about five or ten minutes we tracked down here and the deer was basically going, Print was tracking this deer right in the direction in which I wanted to go anyway. So I thought, well, I'm already heading out here to take a bite of the wind. Print's tracking a deer in this direction, so I might as well follow it and we'll see what happens. And we were tracking down this beautiful open gully. It was really nice. And we went for about 20 minutes just tracking down this gully. And... We got up to about here, so about 20 minutes later, about four or 500 meters later, the deer did a hard 90 degree turn and started heading up towards this ridge. Once we got up on top of the ridge, the deer did another 90 degree turn, and now we're tracking it. Prince looking really keen. I'm thinking, man, this deer is right in front of us somewhere. And now we're tracking back into the wind. And we'd only been up on this ridge for about a couple of minutes, like I'd only snuck along the top of that ridge for 100 metres, not even that, 50 metres. Print was looking really keen. He didn't wind it because the deer was about here, but there's that slight angle of that wind pulling the scent away from us. So the deer would have had to have been down the side of that ridge somewhere. The deer didn't smell us coming through here because that slight angle of that wind was pulling the scent away from the deer and we sort of hooked around the back of it here and I knew because that wind was on an angle pulling the scent across and out to our side that it was going to be up to me to see the deer without print indicating it on the wind if it was going to be right in front of us on this ridge it was going to be up to me to see it so I was stalking very quietly and carefully along that ridge top looking ahead as far as I could and sure enough, right about here somewhere, I looked ahead and here's this hind just standing side on on top of the ridge looking back at me and I took the shot. So that was about a 600 meter track that took about 20 minutes. And we tracked the deer from here down the gully, 90 degree, 90 degree, and we shot it on top of the ridge. Without the dog, we would have walked straight past it and kept going. So when I finally saw this hind standing on top of the ridge, she saw me at the same time as I saw her. I didn't have time to get the gun cam rolling and zoom in on her to get the shot or anything. And the GoPro on my head wasn't rolling. It had been rolling for right up until that point, but I just sort of stopped it to start a new shot. And then I saw her and nothing was rolling. And I, I knew there wasn't much time, so I just up and took the shot. So this next shot starts just after I've taken the shot at her and she was close and I got the, the crosshairs right in the middle of her shoulder, the shot felt good, everything was steady, fired the shot and she took off and I was expecting her to be just dead on the ground 10 or 20 yards away but when I went to where I had last saw her I just found a whole heap of blood on the ground and then I thought, okay, she's going to be another 20 yards on. So I put print in front and he started tracking. And next thing, two, 300 meters later, we still hadn't found her and print was still tracking. So at that point, uh, I stopped and we sat down and waited about half an hour. I had a quick bite to eat, gave her a bit of time to settle in, hopefully stop moving and, and lay down and die. And then I put 
print back in front. He started tracking her again and we tracked for about another 150 meters and we found her piled up dead. And I'm pretty sure the bullet did deflect. Um, the, the entry wound was a little bit strange and it had hit her at high, not where I wanted to hit her. Um, but it all worked out in the end. So this had been about a 600 meter track to where we shot her and then about a 300 meter track after the shot to find her again and there was that one big bit of blood at the start of where we started tracking her and then there was actually I didn't really see any blood uh, after that but I've done that I've had that so many times and I know these days just to trust the dog don't keep looking for blood and double guessing and doubling back and second guessing the dog that golden rule always trust the dog and in that situation uh, I'd sat down hopefully to let her set in and die which that's exactly what happened and then we followed up after that and found her dead had we not found her that second time then it's time to go back I've, I've got the track on on my GPS go back and double back find the last blood and have another go but always first time always trust the dog don't second guess the dog another interesting thing that you can see here when print is tracking her in this footage the scent of this wounded deer is so fresh and so strong print hasn't actually got his nose pinned to the ground and really obviously tracking he's actually got his head up and he's just walking and he's looking back waiting looking back to me saying hurry up let's go and he's actually just casually walking it doesn't even look like he's tracking that hard it's because there's so much scent and it's so easy for him to follow he doesn't even need to have his nose hard down so that's really one to keep an eye out for and i've had this quite a few times tracking wounded animals after the shot when the dog just seems to be walking really casual but they know exactly where they're going they're, they're really adamant and they want to go somewhere but their nose isn't hard down and yet you haven't seen blood the dog's just going in a certain way and you don't see any other blood uh, and you're really second guessing it but I'm still following the dog and there's been times like this when I have followed the dog for a long long way and I'm really second guessing it and then I see a tiny little spot of blood on one leaf and I'm like wow the dog is still following it you've really got to trust the dog in these cases okay so this is the hunt for the second deer this is another day this is another day this is about a week later I've gone back to the exact same place basically repeating the same hunt <clears throat> and today the wind's going in the complete opposite direction the main wind is coming this way like that and I'm basically doing a, an, an exact repeat of the same hunt I often do this once I get a, a spot worked out and I know there's a good few deer in there then I'll give it a week or two or even longer break and I'll just go back to the exact same place and do the same thing again because now I know it and I've got my marks and I've marked all the nice little spots and I know my way around it and everything. <clears throat> so this day, remember, this is the river and bluffs down here, the creek and bluffs here, the private land up there. And we come up our spur here. And I come up this spur, um, hunted along this ridge. I usually check that out. That's just a really nice open area. Um, I'll shoot a deer there one day, I, I guarantee it. There's always fresh sign and stuff around in there. Uh, then again, I double back down this way and oh, I come right around back on top of this ridge. And I, I was back on top of this ridge. Now, the thing is with wind is the main wind might be going this way, but then what we ended up shooting a deer over here, okay? And but what happens is the thermals, you know, and the in, in cold areas, wind falls down uh, cold faces and down into shady gullies and it will rise up sunny faces. So the wind might be going like that, but it'll end up doing all sorts of weird stuff all over the place. Um, 
and you might be on this ridge top and it'll feel like the wind's going straight that way but then you'll come around here and there's a little bit of sun hitting the the face of this ridge so the wind will be coming up that face and it's sort of all over the place and what but what I can tell you what happened this hunt and I've got shots of of the dog indicating the whole thing is um, we hunted that ridge, turned around, come back. I was coming along this ridge here, and the dog started indicating real keen down into this gully. Print was indicating really keen down into that gully. And so we dropped down the side, down into the gully. Print was sort of tracking and winding and very keen coming along. And now we're doing, doing the exact same thing that we were doing last time when we were tracking that hind that we ended up shooting on the ridge over here. <clears throat> except as we were working our way up this gully with print winding and tracking and very keen, very on edge, there's obviously animals here somewhere. Um, we spooked a deer right here. The deer was on the fa on the edge of this this ridge here. We're in the gully, and it, it must have seen us, because I'm just sneaking along the bottom of this gully, sort of looking everywhere, and then there's a squeal, and I think I might have just saw a little bit of movement flicking through the trees, you know, and there was a deer standing up on this face, looking down on me as I was walking up this gully. So that deer took off. Print still, and it actually sort of, it took off from about here, somewhere, and ran along that face. And I thought it actually ran along and dropped back down. And and so I'm coming up this gully thinking that this deer might be around here somewhere. But what happened is, is when we got to about here, this wind, that the prevailing wind of the day was going that way, okay? But in the ridges and gullies, uh, especially early in the morning and late in the evening, as the sun might be hitting one side of the face, but then the other, if the sun's coming up over here and shining this way, then the faces that are facing this way are in the shade and the faces that are facing that way are in the sun. So, and, the, and the breeze will do, and thermals will be doing all sorts of strange stuff. And the wind was only just there too. It was actually a very calm day. So everything was just light breezes. As we got to about here, it was still early and it was still cool in this gut and this face was in the shade and there was a cool breeze coming down this face, it's coming straight down this face here like that and that's where print started winding really hard straight up the face and very very keen too. I knew that that deer was close and it was definitely a deer, it was one of those very good direct winds. And it's not very far from where he started winding uh, up to the top of that ridge. So we climbed up to the top of that ridge and so remember print indicated straight up that face and wanted to come straight up that face. But as soon as we got to the top of this ridge, print went from wanting to go straight up the face. As soon as he got, we got to the top of that ridge there was a breeze on my right hand cheek and Print was just looking hard down to our right, like on a 45 degree angle, he was looking down the side of this ridge, down to over here. So I climbed up the face, and I actually had Print in at heel at this point, because he was already keen, he was staying, indicating, and I was sneaking in, I knew the deer was close, so I was sneaking in with him at heel, and I was just sneaking up, looking for the deer, looking down at him, and watching which direction he's looking, and I, when I got to the top, the breeze is coming this way, and I looked down at print, and he's just staring very intense, like basically pointing, looking to, for the deer that he knew was right in front of us. I snuck down really, really carefully, basically gun up at the ready. I'm looking for a deer behind the, on the other side of every tree, because just from reading print, he's acting like there's a deer right there, so I'm trusting the dog. And sure enough, as I'm moving down, that this young spiker jumped up from up behind some pepper woods and ran down the face. And again, the girl fawn call. 
hit him with one of those and um, he pulled up behind some fern and I just slowly had to reposition take my time and be real and really slowly carefully moved in and I saw him in there in behind the ferns and I up and shot him So this whole hunt, this deer that we ended up shooting over here, it started over here. That distance is probably about four or five hundred yards. We were up here. Prince started winding deer down into here. That distance is probably about two hundred yards. Print could just smell from up here that there were deer in this area somewhere. And he just wanted to come down this face. So we come down. He lost the direct wind in this area, but he knew what direction he wanted to head in. And he was just interested this way, but he didn't have that direct wind. He was, he was sort of, he'd track a little bit and look and get a little bit of a woof. And, but it, he wasn't locked up on that direct wind. When that deer squealed at us, Print didn't have a direct wind. Um... I think because in the gut, the wind was going that way in the gut too. In the gut, the wind was going that way. Somehow when we were up here, Print got some wind from these deer down here. The, the wind swirled or something and Print got a puff of wind up this face. We're up on a ridge here. This is a gully. Print got a whiff of deer that was down in here from from up here, print clocked that, he knew there was a deer in this area somewhere and he just come down here looking for it and I just followed him and he worked his way along here, we spooked that deer about here, it squealed at us and took off, another 150 metres on, print just locks up direct wind straight up the face, we climb about honestly not even 100 metres, about 100 metres up the face and, and when I got on top of that ridge, there was that slight change in wind angle. And print was just locked up, like almost getting the quiver on, which meant there's a deer right in front of us. And, and we spooked it, pulled him up, repositioned, shot him. So that wind that print locked up on down here was... That prevail the deer was up here, that prevailing wind was basically all going this way, but the cold face and this cold gully just sucked a bit of that over the side, and that's what Print got that direct wind on, and that's why when we went up, and then we got up into the moving ear, up a bit higher, next thing it was to our right. So this next deer, this is the same day, and you know how I had the area with the ridges, the, the, the ridge here, and the gully, and the next ridge. <clears throat> this is after I shot that spiker over that next ridge, and I went way off out into the public land. You know how I said there's miles of public land way out off the whiteboard? This is later on in the day, and I've just been heading out that way for a good couple of hours. Once I got out onto the flat, and it got very flat and it got into the middle of the day, there was no real solid direction of the wind. It was just sort of very calm. And as I was stalking, sometimes the wind would sort of be just on my right cheek and then it would be behind me and then it would be in front of me for, you know, come in my face for a while. It was just sort of all over the place. But at, by that point of the day, I was just sort of exploring by then anyway. I, I was actually trying to find a creek. There was no water for a long way. And I was trying to get right out there and find a creek right out that way uh, that I can go back to and set up a camp right out there because there's actually no water for quite a long way there. <clears throat> so while I'm heading out there exploring, at this time, let's say I'm, I'm walking in this direction in a straight line. <clears throat> For the last while I had been aware 
that the general wind at the time seemed to be kind of on a 45 like that. But it kept turning and swirling and was all over the place, but that's what the main general wind had been for a while while I was walking in that direction. And I'm trying to go this way. That's the, that's the general line that I'm walking in. It was quite good country, so I was able to actually hold a pretty straight line. As I was walking, Print all of a sudden just put his nose down hard and started tracking basically at a 90 degrees. He just wanted to track straight out that way. Print, I saw Print tracking out to my left and he was tracking very keen and then stopping and having a wind and looking. He just did a couple of things that made me think, man, this deer's real close, so I'm going to go after this. And I literally went, I can't remember off the top of my head, but not far at all. Like it may have even only been about 40 or 50 meters. So I'm walking hard out this way. There's a deer and the deer happened to be about here. Let's say the deer are there. And Prick was tracking them and he tracked out like that. And the deer must have gone like this. And they were about there. And Print was tracking and he stopped and actually set up and winded a couple of times. He was getting like a bit of a swirl of a deer that was very close. But the wind didn't feel good to me either, you know. It was sort of swirling and by then I'd already shot a deer and I was sort of only half hunting. But I thought I'll just follow this up and check it out and see what happens. And so the deer had obviously walked this way and then looped around because Prince tracking like this, he's tracking the deer and we got to about here and a deer squealed from right next to us and went running off. They only ran about 20 meters like this and stopped again and they were standing in the pepper woods over there and because that spooked I do this quite a bit if a deer spooked and then they stop again and I know the deer is going to hear me and see movement as I'm trying to sneak in to get the shot I'll do a couple of fawn calls, like that, <clears throat> that's not a very good one, and half the time when I do them in the bush they don't sound very good either, because you, you've been walking and you've got a dry throat and you haven't been talking for a while, and you try to do one in the instant, in the moment, and they come out all cocked up, but some deer aren't that smart, younger deer, um, deer in areas that don't get too much pressure, and it's always worth a go, right? Because these deer took off and then they stopped only about 20 meters away. I only need to walk about 20 meters and I would be looking into the spot where the deer was standing and squealing. So I know the deer are going to hear me coming. If I make a sound that makes them second guess and think that I might be a deer, they're going to be way more likely to stand there and let me get a little bit closer. So that's what I do. And that's what I did in this case. As I moved in, I gave a couple of phone calls. And it worked.
and so we tracked them, we spooked them from about here, the deer were here and they took off, only for about 20 meter burst stopped, and I was able to get from here, uh, climb over a couple of logs and get up to here where I could get a clear view <clears throat> to where the deer were standing and some pepperwood there. And they were standing in tight pepperwood, and Seeker will often do this. They'll jump up, boost, get in behind some cover, and stand there squealing at you, trying to work out what's going on. And so I snuck up to there, giving a couple of fawn calls to try and fool them. And once I got to there, where I was looking straight into the pepperwood where the deer was squealing from, I just got the scope up and was looking, and then I started seeing them, and they were in there, and they weren't even standing still, they were sort of in there, I don't know what they were doing, but I could see them moving around, just in this one tiny little patch of pepperwood, these two seekers were standing there, all sort of um, worked up, and turning side to side, and squeal, and then move a bit, and bump into each other and stuff, and they moved around until I got a really good clear shot of the yearling and I just shot her right in the right in the shoulder. Really good shot. And she dropped on the spot. Uh, the hind ran away, and I just watched her run away. And and I'd been and this this comes up later because I was walking this way, come out here like that, shot the yearling there, and the hind ran back that way. And I think we run into her later on on the way back. It's the yearling. Saw the hind go running off that way after the shot. It's a 150 grain SST. I've got it downloaded, so it's doing about 2.4 for a nice mild quiet load with my big suppressor on it. But um, they are an absolute hammer. I just rolled it over in my hand to, um, I was gonna put it in my pouch and the lead cord fell out on my hand. So that's it, that's the copper jacket. That's the lead core. So after I shot that second deer, I didn't want to shoot any more deer that day because with the two deer, I had about as much meat as I wanted to carry out. And on the way back, I was hunting back into the wind because I'd been hunting out with the wind behind me, or more or less behind me most of the day. On the way back, I was hunting back into the wind and as I got further back, I sort of veered out to the right, so I was coming back on a on a new line too, sort of coming back through clean country. And I saw several deer on the way back. We spooked a couple and found some really cool, nice open areas with heaps of mahoe and feed trees and was marking them on the GPS and that. Uh, one deer, not long after we turned around, only to a couple of hundred meters back from where I shot that deer. Uh, Print did exactly what he did on the way out, which I was trying to walk a straight line, and I was actually walking straight back over, right on my footsteps of where we walked on the way out. So right in the exact same spot. We crossed a creek in the same spot, and I was taking this little game trail over a ridge, 
It was a really uh, open area. It was quite chewed out with some good feed trees and that a really good hunting spot. And a deer had obviously walked through after we'd come through. So we'd, we'd come through, went out, shot that deer. And while we were out there and on our way back, a deer had walked past like right in front of us because I'm just cruising my way back, not paying much attention. Prince just cruising along in front. And he just er, slammed on the brakes, put his nose down and started tracking out to our right. He was so keen and it was so open. Um, I just thought I'd follow him. And I followed him for not far at all, about 50 meters. And it was a classic track and switch where the wind was sort of on our on an angle, on a 45 like that. And Print put his nose down, started tracking, and then he hit the direct wind of a deer that was laying down in his bed. Okay, so to explain this, there's a creek coming through here. On the way out, we come through and there was a really nice ridge. Say this ridge is sort of here. And there was a there was some big mahoe trees dotted all throughout this ridge like that. And underneath them was real open. It was a really nice area. And there was a heavy game trail, real obvious heavy game trail that sort of veered through it like that and then went down to a creek crossing. On the way through, I took that path and each side of it was quite thick bush. So the, the country just sort of naturally funneled you right onto this game trail here. And we went out there and we went out and shot that deer and sat down and had a bite to eat and then butchered the deer and did all of that. And we're coming back through, we use the exact same creek crossing, we climbed up this game trail. And when we come through earlier, Print didn't put his nose down and track out that way. But on the way back, we got to here. A deer had, I think it may have been the hind that ran away with the yearling. But we'll get to that in, again in a moment too. Or it may have been another deer that just come walking down the ridge like this crossed over where we had walked out uh, but it also had crossed over in front of us where we were coming back and that deer crossed over that game trail that we were using and come down around here about 50 meters and laid down in behind a, a bit of a lump of dirt and a bit of scrub down there we come walking back print puts his nose down there and just tracks off i'm thinking i'm going to go out this way but when he did that that keen, I'm like, man, there's a deer just down around the corner. And this is such a nice open spur. I've got to go check it out. The wind here was coming through on an angle like that. And Print wasn't winding or pointing or anything. He, we, he just come along our game trail there. He hit where this deer had crossed over in front of us. He put his nose down and just started tracking. 
But see where this deer has walked, so that's right where Print's going to track. And the wind's coming this way, so walking down here, Print doesn't have the wind of this deer, doesn't have it, doesn't have it, bang, right there is where he hits the direct wind from this deer. And right where he hit the direct wind of that deer was probably about 15 or 17 metres away from it, even if that. And Print was just tracking, 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 and then he just went bang. And he was like locked up, quivering, all full on. And really slowly sneaking and creeping up, creeping up. And I knew that the deer was right there, and I was looking and looking, and where the hell is this blooming thing? And... We got right up and it was just laying in this tiny little dip on the other side of this lump of dirt and there was a bit of a tree in the way in that. And I'm looking and Print was just locked up, just staring. I'm looking as hard as I can and sure enough I took one more step, ducked under this thing and sort of stood up and this seeker hind jumped up out from this dip and tore off. Uh, she stopped too, so there's a creek here and this is quite a steep drop down into this creek. She only blasted about 12 metres and stopped behind a bit of stuff there. We walked up to where I'd last saw her and she took off again. And then I saw her sort of mucking around on the face on the other side of this creek. This was a real nice open creek looking down into it. And next thing there's another deer squealing from over here somewhere. Because I spooked her and I thought it was her squealing. So I sort of walked over and I was having, I was looking down the face because there's a deer squealing over here. Next thing the hind I just spooked ran off from over there. So there were deer all over the bloody place. But that was just a classic demonstration of a track and switch. Even though it's all, this is all very close, you know, like the, the deer we shot earlier was a good sort of 600 metre track. That wind earlier we had print winded from the ridge right over here and then we went down a couple hundred meters up a couple hundred meters and then up a couple hundred meters that was a good sort of five six hundred meter find the, the first tracking job was a good five or six hundred meter find uh, these last couple have just been like 50 meter tracks and then bang straight into the deer but on all of them even these very short ones we would have walked straight past the deer without the dog so as always, I took all of the meat off these deer. These three deer were all prime eating animals. I boned it all out, kept, cooled it all down in the bush, packed it all up and carried it all home. Once I get it home, I break down all the individual cuts, uh, vacuum pack it all, label it all, and then I wet age it in the fridge, in a really, really cold fridge, and then it goes into the freezer. And the venison off these three seeker have been, has been awesome, it's been really, really good. We've been doing front barbecue in the back steaks and doing curries and I kept all of the shanks and the neck meat and we've been doing slow cooks and everything, it's been really good. So that's it for this video anyway. If you want to find out about how I train print to hunt like this, you can check out the Deer Dog Training Blueprint. All of the links are in the description. I want to say a huge thanks to all of the people that have signed up to the Deer Dog Training Blueprint. You guys are really the reason why I make videos like this and why I'm able to make videos like this. So a huge thanks to you guys and everyone that's watched this video and we'll see you in the next one.